Dustin focused on the feel of the slick dishes as he rotated them under the soapy water. He let the suds glide over the back of his hands, feeling the way the warmth of the dishwater seeped into his skin and clogged the tips of his fingers. It was all he could do to remind himself that he was still alive, still breathing and living, though his soul felt dead as roadkill. In the living room, Katie worked by the lamplight, stuffing little soap bars into tiny organza sacks for Lily's wedding favors. The wife of the Deviant Beta made soaps and candles for a living, and offered to cook up almost two hundred discs for the bride-to-be. The scents of lavender and chamomile filled the entire house, to the point that Dustin couldn't even smell the food residue on the dirty plates he washed. Besides the sound of sloshing water in the sink, and the whisper of tightening drawstrings on the organza sacks, silence ruled between Katie and Dustin. Not a word had been spoken since the pack left for Logan's change night. He was in no mood to talk, and Katie seemed to understand. Since she couldn't change, and Dustin's heart simply wasn't in the right place for a run, he elected to stay home and look after her. Listening to the sappy goodbyes between the mated pair was like a dull blade twisting in his chest. Another reminder that he didn't have what he so desired. Love. He made the others believe that he was just lonely for a maid or companionship. Which he was. But it was so much more than that. The whores in one-night stands weren't enough to fill that hole inside. That he didn't even realize was there until Katie and Logan's relationship became so serious. He watched their happiness grow and blossom into something so beautiful, so pure that he couldn't help but be envious of it. He had something like it once. And not a day passed that he didn't remember Cassandra's blue eyes looking back at him. Dustin had finished scrubbing the plates and bowls, leaving only the utensils to fish out from the dark, cloudy dishwater. His thumb brushed the edge of a blade on a knife and a bit of blood seeped from the cut that healed quickly. He hardly felt it. The pain was nothing compared to the endless ache in his core that wouldn't let him sleep or enjoy life anymore. Now more than ever, he could understand what Ben went through when they first met. He understood why his friend would think that swallowing a silver coin was an easy way out of his suffering. Right about now, Dustin was ready to swallow a thousand silver bullets if it meant he could have just a few moments of relief. He pulled his hands from the soapy water and braced himself against the edge of the counter as another wave of body-numbing agony took hold. His lungs refused to breathe, his muscles tensed and quivered. If he wasn't careful, he'd crack the granite under his tight grip. Dustin? Katie whispered from the plush recliner in the living room. He swallowed back the urge to scream and waited until the momentary torment passed before answering her. What is it? She didn't reply for a few beats, and then he heard her shift in her seat and gasp. Spurred into a panic that something was wrong, he grabbed for the dish towel to dry his hands and came to her. The sack of soap bars was spread out over her lap, while the box of organza pouches sat on the end table beside her. She, however, was focused on her stomach, and held it as if it were ready to burst. What's wrong? he asked, watching the way her face evolved from stages of startled to panicked, and back again. Katie jumped, and Dustin snatched the soaps away from her to cast them aside on the floor in front of the sofa. Ready to pull her from the recliner, he heard something he didn't expect. A laugh. Her face split in a huge grin, and Katie was laughing. Girl, if you don't tell me what's going on, I swear I'll- Dustin was quite sure what he would have done, but Katie didn't let him finish. No, it's not bad. Here. She reached out and grabbed his wrist to yank him toward her. His palm flattened on the top of her belly, and they waited in the stillness for what seemed like an eternity, until he felt it. A tiny kick, or perhaps a punch. But it was unmistakable. The twins were moving. After what felt like ages of frowning and scowling at the world and its unfairness, a tiny smile cracked over Dustin's lips. Each time one of the babies bucked at his hand, the smile widened until he too was laughing with Katie. His wolf, who had been brooding in the darkness, beamed with sudden gladness at such an obvious sign of life. 